Good afternoon everybody. It's afternoon for me and we're going to go over reading an APA style article uh, in which I'll tell you what an APA style article is and how you go about reading one. Here we have the outline of an APA style article and the students in research methods will become to uh, you know be very familiar with this. Uh, the students uh, in social psych and in my other classes will become less familiar but partially familiar with it. Uh, the major components of the outline is that you have a title page, an abstract, uh, the introduction, uh, and the introduction's heading is not introduction but the title again of the article. Then you have a method section with participants, materials or instruments, and procedures. We have a results section and a discussion section. Finally, Ending things up are the references, tables, and figures. I'm going to uh, refer back to the outline, so you may want to stop the presentation now and uh, print out these two pages so that you have a copy of the outline as we move through the rest of the uh, PowerPoint uh, slideshow. So let's move on to an example. Uh, Hugenberg and Bodenhausen facing prejudice. And uh, this, uh, by the way, this uh, slide is in APA style for a uh, you know, uh, end reference. And we have the author's names, uh, last names, first initials. Uh, we have the title of the article uh, with only the first letter of the sentence capitalized. Notice that we consider a colon, a period, so that implicit is capitalized. Psychological science, the name of the article, the journal, is capitalized also, both wor uh, words, and italicized or underlined, as is the uh, issue number and volume number. The volume number is 14, and it was then the sixth issue. Finally, we have the page numbers, a three-page article or four-page four article. I have this on Blackboard, so if you want to uh, download this and print it off, uh, having it handy is probably necessary. So again, uh, stop the uh, presentation now uh, and print that sucker off so you can refer to it. First off, I'd like to discuss the difference between a manuscript and an article. What we have here is a research article. An article has been something that has been printed already, that is published. A manuscript is what you're going to create uh, and turn into me. So something that you've prepared but have not published yet is a manuscript and we'll be talking about your manuscript a lot. Uh, but we're now we're looking at an article. There are a few differences between a manuscript in APA style and an article and uh, you'll s understand that better when I show you a manuscript in a later slideshow. So first off uh, we have the title and the author information. Uh, Kurt and Gail uh, were at Northwestern University. And then the next thing you notice is that we have this abstract. Oh, excuse me. That's not what I wanted to talk about next. Uh, if you go down to the bottom of the page, you see that we have the rest of the reference information here. Volume 14, number 6. And we have the page number, so then you can actually use this information to generate uh, your uh, reference in the reference list. Now we're moving on to the abstract. The abstract is a self-contained, uh, short 100 to 120 word uh, overview of the entire paper. The purpose of the introduction is to uh, give you a very short overview of the paper so that if you're considering reading the paper, which will take effort, uh, you can read the abstract in about a couple minutes and then determine if the paper is worth your time to go through or not. Then the first section of uh, APA style paper will be an introduction. And uh, what you're going to have in the introduction is material to meet two different goals. You're going to present arguments to justify the need to test your hypothesis, and you're going to present arguments to justify the choice of methods to test the hypothesis. Let's go back to the first goal, uh, the need to uh, test your hypothesis. Is your hypothesis interesting? Is it supported in the research literature? That is, 
Uh, is it just a wild idea, or is it something that you probably think will work? Uh, is it worth testing at all? Uh, these are arguments you need to make. If your uh, hypothesis is not worth testing, then why are you doing this? Why are you doing the paper? Uh, so that's what one of the goals is going to be in the introduction. Usually you present arguments by presenting references to past research. And we'll be getting to that in just a minute. And then also another goal of the introduction is that you want to present arguments that uh, justify the choice of methods to test your hypothesis. To test any given hypothesis, you could use a large number of different methods. Why have you chosen this method? There has to be a reason, and we want you to present your reasoning. So a good introduction will meet these two overall goals. The introduction paragraph is the first uh, paragraph or two in your introduction. And this, like your English 125 professor has always said, is to uh, you know, introduce the uh, reader to what you're doing and what you're going to do. So you're going to introduce the reader to uh, the area you're working in, and then you're going to give them a little preview of what you plan to do. And so a good introductory, uh, introductory paragraph should ask, uh, tell the reader what's the area, uh, you know, about what you're interested in, and what your paper will be about. And this is always a difficult uh, task for students. So keep that in mind, that following what your English 125 professor said, you need to have a good introductory paragraph at the beginning of your paper. I recommend that you just like put like in uh, red font uh, introductory paragraph, and write the rest of your paper. And then when you're done with your paper, go back and write the introductory paragraph. It'll be much easier then, because you know what you're going to say, so it's easier for you to give a good introduction. After the introductory paragraph, the introduction section is going to go into the literature review. And as the name implies, you're going to be reviewing previous literature. By literature, I mean research literature, that is, research studies that have been published. Uh, if you go and look at uh, Hugenberg and Bodenhausen's article, you'll notice that the literature review that is referring to previous research has already started in the introductory paragraph. And that's perfectly fine. And they say things like, ambiguously hostile black faces would be perceived as more hostile than similar, similar white face faces. And in the literature review, go back and find out who said this, and why was that fact important. And I really mean it. You may want to stop the uh, uh, slideshow and go back and look at your article. It'll help you uh, develop an understanding of things. Another quote, high prejudice individuals are more likely than others to activate and apply such stereotype content. Who said this? Why is this fact important? Uh, if you go and look at the introduction of Hugenberg's article, what you're going to see is that they're going to cite previous research that said this, that, that's demonstrated this, and they're also going to then, uh, Kurt is going to say exactly why this fact is important for his paper. Other things you may want to go back and look at. Uh, how did Hugenberg and Bodenhausen argue for using implicit measures of prejudice rather than explicit measures? And they really are building an argument. Another thing you can look at, how did they argue for using movie clips rather than static photos? And whose methods were their methods similar to? Go back and take a look, and you'll find all these answers in their literature review. Then finally, by the end of uh, the section called Study 1, you should be able to answer these two questions. What their hypothesis is, and generally what their methodology will be. And I think that's a good thing to do as you're reading a paper. As you get towards the end of the introduction, you should know what their hypothesis is, and you should generally know what their methods section is going to be like, what their methods are going to be like.